made two of these casting porches, I guess that's what you'd end up calling them, that ends up um, with one more to do. And sometimes you need some other things to make your steel mill more realistic and vehicles are one of them. And I'll show you a couple of them. And this is uh, one that you can get. I forgot the name of the company that makes this. Or sometimes you can go to a yard sale. And you can buy yourself a tractor. Right here. And then these are uh, piggy, uh, Tyco piggyback cars, excuse me, trailers. And this is uh, what they call the pup right here. And back in 1968, they didn't have Super B trailers, so they had to have... So, I have a few of these that are extra. These are cab over four trucks. Not that I have anything against these, but... What I did is I just cut the end off right through here. And then, um, I will move this back a little bit here. And there you can see where I... So then I just made a, uh, a hitch on here, and that, that will go up into here. Now, what I have to tell you is that you got to make sure that that your um, vehicles are, are as close to HO scale as what you can. This is HO scale here. You can see I did a pretty decent job of matching them up. But also, uh, these are for the customers that do not have rail service. Now, the important thing you got to remember is that there's a load limit. And normally, that in the United States, at least in, in most states, with the exception of Michigan, which has 180,000 pound gross vehicle weight for trucks, as many of what they call gravel trains. But most of the time it's 40,000 pounds. So, keeping that in mind, you, you, your load has got to be um, no more than 40,000. Okay, so, in other words, I have two of these here, that's, that's 40,000 all together. And so this over here that makes 80,000 pounds. So if you don't do that, then what happens? Your 187th scale truck driver, where you go into the weigh station, and let's say that you put three of these on there, well, you know, you're 20,000 pounds over the limit. And from what they tell me, it's a dollar per pound, which comes out of the truck driver's pocket, which will make your day very unpleasant. For a fact, sometimes they'll make you unload, uh, if they can, um, the offending cargo and it sits at the chicken coop way station until you get another truck to pick it up. So keep those things in mind and the idea too is also get your, get your uh, load balanced between the axles here so that you have uh, equal load uh, per axle. There's a I'm not exactly a truck driver, my brother was, but there's a, a load per uh, 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 axle. And it's um, several thousand pounds per axle or something like that. And so uh, that's to keep it in mind there. And then I, I, pick, I picked this one up at a yard sale. 25 cents, believe it or not. So keep that in mind. And then also the dump truck here. I think from the looks of the, of the grill on the front, it's a Peterbilt. So, anyway, I'm getting back over to the front porch deal.
what can I use for the casting ports that will um, allow me the least amount of fabrication and I came up with this. So we're going to have a little bit of a different roof uh, angle on here. I think I'm just going to have it going down on an angle down through here. And then if you look over here, this should fit right up on top of here. Let's pay attention to what I'm doing here. So, anything that you can use to cut back on your fabrication is okay. So that's what we'll be doing today. Now I'm going to pick my opening here and it's going to be 2 inches high which is 16 feet in HO and it's going to come right down to the bottom here and it's going to go over to the side so I'm going to do that right now and I'm going to use this combination square to get a uh, nice straight line hopefully okay I ended up using the uh, regular ruler here because the box isn't sturdy enough for me to use the combination square so I'm going to cut the opening out now and now I've made that line over to the other side so now we're going to have the taper of the roof coming down on angle over here okay I'll lay that out and there you, you see I've, I've done that so I'm going to do this to the other side and we'll cut that out now I've cut the flaps uh, apart over here and then I've laid this line out here because that's going to end up being even with this okay we should put a floor in there because of this here and that's approximately four and a quarter by four and a quarter Again, I'm going to use my paper slicer and I'm going to make a, uh, a cut this way. And I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to make another, another cut. Going this way. Line it up to four and a quarter make sure I get the edge straight okay now I take this out of here this should fit right up inside here like that to cover up the hole. Now I staple the floor. I always say the, I guess it comes from my days of reading the King James version of the Bible I guess, but anyway, um, you put the, I did it again, <laughs> um, you put the um, floor in the bottom and secure it with masking tape and then we're going to close the roof up get these tabs on the inside here because it'll make it look nicer right there you see the basically completed structure I, I took some shortcuts and used staples to staple the thing together and so I'm just doing some trimming here and there and the masking tape to smooth over the edges here you cut a little slit there which will allow you to fold this over. 